Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to a brand new video. Are you in your comp games lately and struggling to find good team comps for the map that you're in? Well, you click on the right video because today I'll be breaking down the best team comps for every single Valorant map in the competitive pool right now. Make sure to stay right to the very end and gather as much knowledge as you can to help you gain some RR. But without further ado, let's get straight into it. So for the first map that we're going to start off on is Ascent, which is the longest lasting map in Valorant to not be removed for a rework. To start this map off, I'd like to say that this map is quite a defender sided map with a stat of about 53% win rate for defenders of all rounds played as of about a week ago. So let's get into this comp. Ascent is very basic when it comes to team comps. You can try to be like Gen G and run a double duelist, one smoke and one initiator, but let's be real. We're all sh we're all stuck in diamond, elo, hell, and should be running comps that will fit better for our skill set. So for this map, I'd like to say the best team comp would be a Jet, a Sova, a KO, an Omen, and a Killjoy. Now, before you comment me in the comments that yes, this is a default comp setup, but let me explain why this is the best team comp for the map Ascent. I'm going to start on attack here. The reason why Jet is so crucial on a map like Ascent is because the majority of the time that the other team is going to be running their Sentinel on B site. Now with Jet, it's going to allow her to smoke both close lane and CT, allowing her to updraft and dash past either a KJ Molly or a Cypher Trip to catch a KJ or a Cypher off guard to allow your team to then flood through onto site. Moving now onto KO. If you have a KO, it's great to stop a Sentinel from holding a site efficiently if you catch them with a knife, as their util is now going to be denied and essentially allowing you to ease your entry of site. Simply pop a flash through their smoke and take your fights on site. KO's util is also packed with a molly to throw down to cover a main choke point when trying to enter a site. So no dumbass enemy is running through a smoke and one taps you while you're not looking. Next up, Sova. Yep, the Sova lineups come out to shine on this map for some reason. I don't know why everyone feels like when Ascent comes up, they feel like average Jonas. But Sova is so amazing on this map, considering if you abuse the Odin on this map, it basically is made from paper. One ping and a potential kill on the feed. I mean, seriously, you can shoot through pretty much any wall on this this map. Now moving on to Omen. Omen in my opinion is one of the best controllers on this map as it layers a lot of verticality and high and low angles allowing Omen to take advantage of his TP in order to take enemy fights off guard. Throwing one ways has never been easier. Throwing a blind either gen or switch to help your jet is undeniably a strong push. And last but not least we have KJ. KJ is a great sentinel on this map for attack for two main reasons. First reason being the fact that she can have her turret watch B main while holding mid which allows her to gather so much space and map knowledge. And same goes if your team is pushing B. Setting a turret up top mid and holding the run out of A main allows you to control pretty much any rotates for mid while also holding the information on A main. And next up, number two, being post plant mollies. Yes, I know, cringe molly lineups. But hey, if you want to gain an R and win rounds, you want to find them and use them. But that's enough about attack. Let's move on to defense. So again, we're going to start off with Jet. With Jet on defense, the best thing to do is get an op in her hand as fast as you can to take those mid fights and also take early picks either A or B main. This will push back your enemy or make them use util to clear you, leaving them with less util to entry or take a site. There are many spots to play in with height using your updraft, allowing Jet to take duels and quickly escape with a dash. Now sit back on site and play numbers advantage. Moving on to Sova, again, shock darts to deny entry in plants, pretty much any wall you can bank off, it'll more likely hit someone with a shock dart. So many darts to retake with or get you info with. Using your dart for A site when your team is smoked off so they can use the pings to spray and try to get kills off of is better for your team. Now we have KO. The flash combo with Jet is undeniably the best combo for Ascent. Whether it's an A main flash and Jet dashes up to main to get a quick pick and falls back with your omen popping a one way, I mean come on. And same goes with B main. B site throwing a flash through the window with Jet running up to catch a frag out is so impactful. Splitting Sova and KO on Ascent is so useful and is so crucial for having both initiators split up between A and B. Because now at the end of the day, if you throw your knife A main and you catch no one and you throw your dart for B and you catch no one, you now have the information to regroup and defend mid. Since Ascent is a defended sided map, throw a smoke, get ready to blind and hold your site, use your TP and play height. Super, super simple. Throw your one ways and call it a day. Done. Lastly, we have is KJ. Now listen, KJ can single-handedly hold down B site if set up properly. Throw a molly on switch, a molly on lane. Play stairs or boathouse with your alarm bot holding market and your turret set up on that top box in CT. This will allow you to deal so much damage while also holding market to give your team the info they need in mid. And pretty much that's it for Ascent. So now, let's move on to Lotus. Lotus is like Haven. It has three bomb sites and has a lot of freaking corners and angles to clear when trying to entry. Still a fairly new map in comparison to others like Ascent or Split, but with that being said, a double controller comp is the best comp for this map. Let's get into this comp. I would personally use a Raze, a Breach, an Astra, a Viper, and a KJ. Yes, I know I said Astra, but come on bro. 
Her sucks and stun for post plants on Lotus are so useful, especially if you were to combine it with a raise. But let's start off on attack. The reason I say raise is because she can take advantage of her mobility with satchels to catch the enemy by surprise in tight spots, which will allow to get some easy frags for your team and take space for them to get onto site. Nades are also beneficial to clear corners, or if you have them for post plant, they're even better. This also works very well with a breach stun to satchel on an enemy, but also to nade and stun to catch an easy frag. Next up, we have breach. Breach is an expert in crowd control, both on attack and defense, especially on Lotus. You can use his abilities to make an impact on all three sites by opening up one site or preventing enemies from pushing through smokes without taking a heat load of damage. He is considered to be one of the best initiators for Lotus, and his ability to use Flashpoint and Fault Line to entry on a site is unbeatable. But let's move on to our next agent, Astra. Astra's kit allows her to shine in all aspects of Lotus. She is the most versatile controller, allowing her to smoke pretty much every choke point to entry on either three sites, while still being able to play post plant with sucks and stuns to help delay the defuse, or a plant. Now we've got a Viper. Viper on attack is crucial to having her wall set up to condition the other team, but also having the wall set up to lurk. Having the enemy not know where someone is each and every round will have them play more passive because they don't want to get picked off, so even if sometimes you're 5 manning a site, having a Viper wall up will still leave possibly one or two players still holding that opposite site, looking for that lurk. Plus a bonus is, post plan molly lineups. If you play Viper and want to rank up, simply go to my channel and find some Viper lineups and setups for some maps and more to come soon. Lastly again, we have a KJ. KJ is a must have pick on Lotus as she efficiently holds down sights and watch flanks all on her own. And additionally, her ultimate can get tremendous amount of value on an attack, allow for an easy sight take or even a post plant strat, forcing them to either push you to destroy it or delay the plant time even longer. Having the ability to lurk and have your turret gain a lot of info is very crucial on a three sided map like Lotus and again, post plant mollies come into play tremendously when planting on any site. But now let's get into the defense. So now let's dive into defense and why this comp is great for defense. Simply put, double controllers. So if the enemy team doesn't come packed with initiators or flash util, it's going to be hard for them to take a site. With both B and C being so small, raises nades deal a great amount of damage on choke points, allowing for assists and frags to come a lot easier. Even the long sight lines at A and C main have areas where enemy teams are likely to gather up for a push, and an early paint shells could chip off a big portion of health, stopping any attack dead in its track. Next, let's go over Breach. Breach has been around the Valorant scene since beta days. The Swedish initiator can flash, stun, and damage opponents using his util, and his util is very impactful in maps that have long sight lines and narrow choke points, which is essentially great for Lotus. Now, let's move on to the controllers. Astra. All of her abilities can be placed and used from anywhere on the map. Playing Astra takes some patience and practice, as you do have to be very calculated with when and how you use her four Astra stars. But, if used correctly, you can greatly benefit your team in so many ways. Next, we have Viper. By targeting a specific rubble or debris on A site with a snake bite, Viper can create a damaging zone that discourages enemy from entering or holding positions in that area, providing control and area denial for the defending team. And for the last agent on Lotus, it's KJ. A site is probably Killjoy's strongest spot, even though a lot of these ranked demons like to play C, but who am I? <laughs> Her turret, alarm bot, and mollies can gather great information and prevent enemies from flooding A site without taking a heat load of damage. But now that we're done here on Lotus, let's move on to our next map, Breeze. Breeze is the sixth map to have been released in Valorant since beta. It has two bomb sites and some features portrayed that we don't really see in any other map, and the hardest site to retake is B, from my opinion, because of all the angles and corners to reclear. It's also a fairly big map, allowing for a lot of timings and lurks to be on the watch for. So with that being said, let's move on to the comp I feel is best for this map in order to get you the wins in your ranked games. So here it is, Jet. Sova, Sky, Cypher, and Viper. This is a solid team comp for the map Breeze. So let's start off with attack. Jet is necessary on Breeze due to the fact that she excels on closing the gap during long range fights, which Breeze has a lot of, let's be real. With her mobility, you can easily help your team clear a site and secure the plant. Even though Riot finds everything in their small little brains to keep nerfing Jet, she still has one of the highest win rates on Breeze alongside Viper. Now let's move on to Sova. Sova is very flexible and useful on Breeze due to his abilities like the Recon Bolt and the Shock Darts that can reveal enemies through smokes to help your team entry a site with the most corners cleared. Now, Sky. A lot of people probably think Sky might not have been the best pick on Breeze, but let me tell you, you're wrong. For attack, Sky's dog can pretty much hit any Cypher trip, allowing your team to break it and flood a site, rather than sitting back getting tagged by a goddamn rat Cypher sitting in a corner making you rage and want to break your monitor. But not only can Sky's dog be useful just for trips, but her flash to pop through a Viper wall is more than enough to flood a site and win your fights. Alright, now that we got those three out of the way, let's move on to Viper. I don't care what anybody says, Viper is essential on Breeze for so many reasons. 
Viper's Wall has been proven to be a game changer on Breeze, offering strategic control and cover during attacking on both sites. Her wall splits both sites in half, allowing your team to take more controlled fights on site without having to clear 75,000 angles at once. Now, last person on this list for Breeze is Cypher. Yes, I know. We don't like it when the other Cypher does that rat to us, but I want you to know you need to do it also. Until now, you have become the very thing you swore to destroy. Don't lecture me, Obi-Wan. Best spot to place a cam on attack is mid. To watch nest and double doors to look for rotates or timing for any teammates pushing into elbow. With that being said, let's move on to defense. Jet again. With how big Breeze is, long range fights are inevitable. So get that op and be the biggest op crutch you can be. Whether it's holding mid or taking close angles in main, use it to your advantage and dash the hell out of there. On B site, there are a lot of spots to sit on top of, and having Jet's updraft allows for great use of height advantage to take those unexpected fights and take more rounds for your team. Now, we have Soba. We all know that since Viper's essential in Breeze, we all know that the enemy is more than likely to run a Viper as well. But luckily, having a Sova in your team's lineup allows for you to wait for them to throw up their Viper wall, and you sit back, throw your Sova dart, and shoot through the wall, and have them raging behind those headphones well, they start typing in all chat saying you're a loser. Anyways, let's get to Sky. Early flashes and dogs for information allows for your team to now play off that info and take advantage of such a big map to allow them to lurk and now have enemies pinched and you have a better win rate. Pretty simple. Viper. Yes, I said Viper on defense needs to be separated from Cypher. So setting up a default wall for mid to protect your team when rotating is needed to not get spotted in doing so. Having an orb set for those main choke points can help in stopping the enemies from flooding a site and comboing it with her snake bites or mollies, which is going to benefit your team tremendously. Now the last to cover is Cypher. Setting up a cam to play off of while using a trip to cover halls because nobody in ranked ever wants to cover it for some reason and I could not tell you why. Play off the other trip and hold down B site, which everybody thinks you can do solo because apparently you're God, but do your thing and Cypher Util will back you up more than you know it. So, but now that we've gone over Breeze, let's move on to our next map, which is Sunset. But before we do that, if you guys have stayed this far, I appreciate it so much and I don't think you guys understand how much it means to me, but it would mean the world to me if you guys could hit that subscribe button as we are going to be doing some huge things this year. But without further ado, let's get back into this video. The newest map in the Valorant map pool is Sunset, which has a familiar setup of three lanes, two sites, the three lanes being A main, mid, and B main. This inevitably leaves both teams to set up to try to take control of mid. So now let's break down the best team comp in order to win more games on Sunset. Reyna, Sova, Sky, Asha, and Killjoy. Now, hear me out. I say Reyna because with her self-sustained abilities and aggressive playstyle, Reyna can excel in taking early map control and securing kills, especially in a wide open area like Sunset's mid, where her flashes can actually be useful for once. But now, let's go to attack. Sova is useful on the sole ground that for attack, he can use his shock dart for any cypher trips to allow his team to flood out on that B site. And the amount of corners there are on this freaking map are unreal. So Sova's drone and dart come in clutch on a map like Sunset to give your team the info they need to entry into any site. Now Sky's util kit is a great choice for Sunset, allowing her to clear out a lot of corners with her dog and finding info for the team to take the site easily and more controlled. Since Sunset is such a wide map, her seekers give great value to allow your team to regroup and hit a site. Now moving on to Astra. Her kit is so versatile on a map like Sunset, Astra's suck and stuns are a great combo for clearing out enemies with a raise nade, forcing them to take a fight they don't want to take. Also, Astra's all, due to the way Sunset is designed, can simply go right across the map, allowing for your team to confuse the hell out of the other team on where you're executing a plant or site entry. And lastly, for KJ, you can use her kit like the turret to control an A push from the defenders, allowing you to take on a lurk, control a space, and gather information for your team. Plus a bonus, you get two nano swarms for post plant to help secure more rounds. Now, let's move on to defense. For defense, I think Reyna is a great pick for early info and to gather fast picks in A or B main with the ability to get out super quickly. Having such a wide open map, Reyna is also useful in taking mid like I've said before and control away from the attackers as her flash can be used properly. And for Sova, using his dart to gather info early on to allow for rotation or flanking. Now again, taking B main control on defense in my opinion is such a pivotal moment in winning key rounds. And with the right Sova util, it's going to allow for you and your team to take the space, making the enemies fall into a fight in B main, which they don't want to take, or fall back to mid or fully rotate. Which now, you've got full knowledge of, making it easier for your team to read. Now, Sky. Wow. What a pick for this map. Having a dog to stun enemies trying to flood a site is crucial especially if combined with a KJ turret to deal damage and they can't do anything about it. Sucks for them. But such a useful tool to deny a site entry. Also, retaking with sky flashes popping out of smokes, considering smokes are pretty much going to be at every choke point on sunset, is a very useful tactic to flash and swing to retake. Hence why I feel sky is a very good flash initiator for sunset. Now moving on to Astra. 
Her ability to smoke off any choke point from anywhere on the map is crucial, as it makes her one of the most reliable picks for a team comp on Sunset. If the enemy team decides to gather information for a long distance or rush into the site, using a combo of Astra Smoke or Gravity Well proved to help delay these scenarios and help your team deny entry. Now, a lot of people would say Cypher over KJ and Sensei, but in my opinion, I disagree. There are too many lineup Larrys out there to break trips and flood a site. So instead of running a Cypher, run a KJ. Use your turret to swing off of and deny site entry with your Nano Swarms. Also, KJ is very valuable because her Alarm Bot turret can also cover multiple choke points, and when it comes to retaking, her ult on defense can completely clear both sites, allowing players in steep corners to take fights where retake is easier and more winnable for yourself. Alrighty, here we go. Split. Now I'm going to break down two comps for this map, starting off with the first one, which is the most basic comp you see nowadays in your ranked games. A Jet, Rays, Omen, Cypher, Sky. But listen, before you leave, hear me out. This new comp that I've come out with, and especially with the new agent coming out, I feel like the new meta for split is going to be a double controller. So next time you five stack or want to scrim, try this out. Hear me out. Raze, Sky, Omen, Viper, and Cypher. Now let me just break that down for you why this comp is so underrated. With split being such a defender-sided map, having that double controller will for sure make winning easier on defense. Speaking of defense, let's break it down on why each of these agents are good. So to start off, let's go Raze. We all know why Raze is good on this map. A lot of choke points on split are very small, making Raze's nades very beneficial for stopping the enemy from flooding onto a site and helping your team out. Also, having her satchels in her util kit allows her to take early space and to get out quickly. Now let's move on to Sky. Sky's flashes allow for early info on the whereabouts of the enemy team, allowing for you and your team to come up with a strategy to win these rounds better. Now, although Riot decides to nerf Sky to having only two flashes because they think that's a good idea because, you know, you're only going to use two flashes in a round. Yeah, good job, Riot. Thank you. With that being said, she can still give a lot of info to help your team to set up and win those rounds. Next, we got in the lineup is Omen. Now, Omen is a staple to split and its defensive standpoint allows for Omen to be crucial in stopping a flood and smoking off the choke points or quickly TPing to rotate and help your teammates out. But now that Omen is out of the way, we can move on to Viper. And the reason as to why I chose Viper is because of the fact that having two controllers is pretty hard for the enemy to flood a site. And her mollies are useful for helping stopping a push. And lastly, we have Cypher. Cypher is by far the best sentinel in split. He offers enough util to hold down a site solely by himself while still providing a lot of information again to help your teammates take more favorable fights. Enough about boring old defense. Let's talk about attack. First and foremost, Raze, by far the best pick for duelists on split. Nading tight corners is ideal for making enemies push out of the rat corners they were all crawled up in and take a fight on with you and your team and you can annihilate them from the earth. Also, you can use her nade or satchel to remove those dirty little cypher chips so your teammates can actually enter a site rather than sitting in main with their dicks in their hands and blame you for so-called not entering or just going out and dying, blah blah blah, and whatever else your stupid ass teammates excuses are. But enough about Rays, let's get into Sky. Sky's flashes can be thrown from far range, allowing for you to tactically enter entry site and catching a dude off guard wondering when the flash is going to end but when it does he will be sitting in his mom's basement wondering where he went wrong in life to die to a flying in raise and complain about how he is hard stuck diamond so trust me use sky and win more rounds now like i said double controller so use both of them viper especially can double as a lurker using her wall to get her into spots without the enemy knowing it making them second guess about rotating too early and if they do they're just going to run into your viper to get an easy kill and omen the staple of the map Pop your smoke top mid vents every round. Condition them. Don't allow them to control mid. Split is so easy if you control mid, whether you're on attack or defense. You need mid. It makes taking sites so much easier. So trust me, do it. Combo your blinds with rays and take control of heaven. But now let's move on to Cypher, your main lurker and your information man. Set trips on A and B main to know if you're getting flanked. Please don't be like my rank Cypher saying you forgot because I hate getting flanked on any map, regardless of what map it is, when I have a sentinel whose job it is to, on attack, to watch flanks and gather information. Place your trips and hold for info to give your the team, team to give your team the insight they need to win you the game. Do that and I guarantee your time on split will be a whole lot better when you're winning. But enough about split. We need to get onto these other maps, so let's continue to bind. Starting off with Bind, a map known for its tight corridors and strategic gameplay. Bind's unique feature is that it doesn't contain a midsection. And instead of having two one-way teleporters, one takes players from A short to B short, and the other one takes players from B long to A lobby. Bind is one of those maps where Sentinels and Flash Agents really shine. So why don't we break down what comp I think is best for Bind. Phoenix, Rays, Sky, Brim, and Cypher. Now let's break down as to why I chose this comp. When it comes to attacking, agents like Phoenix and Breach shine. Phoenix's ability to control areas with his flames and self-healing make him a formidable force. Phoenix's wall is super useful for entering on a site using your flash through the wall to take more advantageous fights. Trust me, Phoenix is busted. 
Make sure to farm those orbs. It's a second life for yourself, so use it. Next, we got Raze. Again, with Bind being only two sites, her boomba gives a lot of information to clear either hookah, u-haul, or lamps. And her versatility and movement allows her to get deep into back sites super fast to take those frags that your team needs. Moving on to Sky. Sky's a pivotal player when it comes to Bind. Flashing high or from range, allowing you the information on the whereabouts the enemies could be, whether you want to clear shower or anywhere else. She gives great info. Plus, the map being so small, her alt has crucial value. So be sure to use it when you can. Now, let's move on to Brimstone. Yes, fat ass Brim Daddy is the best smokes to have on Bind. Again, with Bind being so small, if Brim sits on either site, he can pretty much smoke off every choke point on each site. And his molly also gives great use for post plant. Go on my channel and learn some Brim mollies for Bind. It's going to help you win more attack rounds, trust me. Last up for attack, we have is Cypher. Cypher, since the original chamber nerf, has been one of the best sentinels in my opinion especially on bind. You can lock off full flanks with both trips, which is great for when you're playing post plant. You now know mostly where the enemy is coming from, allowing for strategic play. But enough about tack, let's move on to defense. As bind is also another defensive sided map, in my opinion, on the defensive side, Cypher's your go-to agent. Cypher's traps and surveillance tools are perfect for gathering intel and holding down sites. Phoenix's self heal ability allows for him to take first contact of defense to get a pick back up and heal and get ready to take that next fight. Plus, since there are a lot of spots to sit and hold in corners, his flashes are going to come in very handy when they try entering into a site. But next up, we got Raze. Holding Hookah is your best bet. Grab a Judge and sit in the corner. If they're trying to flood you, nade the choke point, fall back into sight, or get your pick and satch out. Either way, her util is so useful for stopping a flood and playing from high angles to win more gunfights. So trust me, pick Raze. Next up, we got Sky. Now listen to me. If you're on Sky on defense, your main job is sit in Garden. Hold B long. The bang of a round, Flash long for info. If you get nothing, dog through TP and clear showers for your team. And now, in a matter of just 10 seconds, you have cleared both B long and showers, leaving only B short, A short for enemies to be in. So use that info, pinch the enemies with your team, and win your rounds and get your RR. Now Brimstone. Smoke off A short and sit in in a few rounds. I guarantee you that you're going to piss the enemies off, okay? Just sit, in, just sit in the smoke. Grab a judge. Sit in there. And you're going to piss someone off. Get kills while doing it. After doing that a few times, they're going to expect you to sit in that smoke. So when they're about to flood into your smoke, pop your molly and let it do the damage for you. All I want you to do is just play unpredictable in and out of those smokes. Use your stim beacon to allow for fast rotates. So just use it. Why not? And lastly, Cypher. There are so many setups you can do on defense to allow you to hold down a site fully by yourself. Find some good setups and lineups and get good at it. And I guarantee you to play off those and you will win way more rounds. But trust me. But enough about Bind, as we only have one more map, and it's Icebox. Icebox was introduced in Episode 1, Act 3 of Alan's History, which brought a whole new dynamic to the map pool. It's set from an Arctic research facility and has so much verticality, meaning agents who can get into higher spots are overpowered on this map. There are two bomb sites with an open midsection allowing for a split take. But let's get into the team comp. Jet, Sova, KJ, Viper, and Gecko. So, but we're going to start off on attack here, so why don't we do that? Jet can be particularly effective on Icebox for multiple reasons, especially when it comes to playing on attack side. First being mobility. Jet's mobility is one of her key strengths and Icebox verticality and multi-level design play to her advantage. Her updraft ability allows her to quickly ascend to higher levels or reposition to unexpected angles, giving her a superior advantage to scout for enemies or initiate engagements. Next up, map control. Icebox features several open spaces and long sight lines, which Jet can exploit with her agility. She can use her tailwind ability to swiftly traverse the map, gaining control of key areas or flanking enemy positions without being easily detected. Thirdly, aggressive plays. Jet's play style lends itself well to aggressive pushes, which can catch defenders off guard on Icebox. Her ability to quickly dash into a bomb site or engage enemies with a blade storm or her ultimate ability can create opportunities for her team to secure crucial picks and gain map control. Now we've got Sova. Sova is great on information gathering, and since Icebox is a map with numerous angles and hiding spots, gathering information is crucial for site attacks on this map. With Sova's util kit, he allows for a lot of map control, clearing a lot of angles, and taking space, which wins you rounds on Icebox. Sova's abilities can be used to initiate engagements and secure entry frags for his team. His shock darts and his ultimate ability, the Hunter's Fury, can deal significant damage to cluster defenders or force them out of position, making it easier for your teammates to follow up with kills and push onto bomb sites. But now let's move on to Viper. Icebox features multiple narrow choke points and tight corridors that can be effectively controlled with Viper's toxic screen and her poison cloud. By developing these abilities strategically, Viper can block off key sight lines and which is going to limit the defender's movement, creating opportunities for her team to push forward safely. Icebox has multiple bomb sites with different entry points and angles of attack. Viper's abilities can provide cover for the spike planter, making it easier to secure the plant and defend it against potential retakes by defenders. But enough about her, we've got Gecko next. Short answer for Gecko is basically simple. 
use him, throw your flash high, and pretty much flash everyone inside and play off of it. It's pretty much that simple. And his ultimate is so useful in Icebox, considering it's a lot of tight spaces and small sites, and it's easy to get frags off of. But now, let's get into defense. And for defense, we're going to start off with Viper. Viper's Poison Cloud and Toxic Screen can obscure sight lines and deny information for attackers. This makes it even harder for attackers to gather intel on defender positions or execute coordinated pushes. By keeping attackers in the dark, Viper can disrupt enemy strategies and prevent them from gaining a footload of information on the map. Even if attackers manage to breach into a site and plant the spike, Viper's abilities can still be super valuable for retake and control. Her Poison Cloud can create cover for her team to approach the site safely, while her ultimate can force attackers out of advantageous positions or deter them from holding angles. But let's talk about Jet. Icebuck is a map with multiple levels and tight quarters, making rotations crucial for defenders. So for Jet's mobility with her updraft and her dash, allow her to quickly rotate between bomb sites or adjust her position based off the enemy's movements. Her agility enables her to provide support where it's needed most and to catch attackers off guard with unexpected flanks. And since she has the ability to reposition and peak angles quickly, definitely, definitely use an operator because she can use her mobility to take aggressive peaks at choke points and entry points, securing early picks and deterring attackers from pushing forward or flooding a site. But next we got is Sova. Sova's abilities are excellent for stalling and delaying enemy pushes. His recon bolt, his shock darts, they can all slow down enemy advances, forcing attackers to proceed with caution or wait for the recon dart to go away. This delay can be valuable time for Sova's team to rotate and set up for more defensive positions or coordinate counterattacks. Sova's kit offers versatility on Icebox defense, allowing for him to adapt to different situations and playstyles. Whether he's holding down a bomb site, supporting teammates with the recon and intel, or engaging an aggressive counterattack, Sova can fulfill multiple roles and contribute to his own team's success in defending enemy site takes. Now we got KJ, cause why not? Killjoy's lockdown ultimate can single-handedly deter enemy pushes or stall attackers, especially when placed strategically on bomb sites. Icebox has open areas where attackers often rush, making lockdown a potential Tool for buying time or forcing attackers to retreat and rotate. Icebox has multiple entry points and choke points and Killjoy's turret and nanoswarm grenades can cover these areas effectively. Placing her turret in strategic locations can provide early warning and chip damage to the attacker, while the nanoswarms can deny entry or delay site plants, forcing attackers to reconsider their approach. And now that we're left with Gecko, his main objective on defense pretty much is pretty simple. Use your molly to deny being flooded on site or to deny plant and use wingman to defuse and flash site for retaking to help your team. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is pretty much it. A full video on every team comp you should start using to win more games on every single map. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like and hit that subscribe button to never miss another video like this. And if you guys want to see more videos like this, make sure to leave a comment down below. It's been your boy D-Rose, and I'll catch you guys in a brand new video. Deuces.